Hello and welcome uh, everyone. My name is Andrew Hetherington and I'm Chief Executive of Business to Arts. We are gradually onboarding people onto this webinar. So those who are joining gradually, you are very welcome. Uh, this is the information webinar on the OnPost Serstat Air and Stamp Commission in partnership with Business to Arts. And we are recording this webinar for your use. We will post it uh, onto our YouTube channel after the webinar. And you will be given a link to the webinar once we are live on YouTube. And feel free to share that link with anyone that you may feel may not have had the chance to, uh, to view this webinar or join us today. And that it is also available for you to recap on any questions that we may have answered in this webinar. So again, you are all very welcome as you join us. Uh, this is the post Serstadat Aaron Stamp Commission webinar in partnership with Business to Arts. So as you can see, uh, this is a Zoom webinar and some housekeeping. Um, you will be aware if you've done Zoom before that there are uh, no of the attendees uh, online. It is just the speakers for this webinar. And I'm delighted to be joined by Mick O'Dee, past president of the Royal Hibernian Academy, who is chair of the Stamp Design Advisory Committee. I'm also joined by colleagues from on post, both Anne O'Neill and Melanie Stanford, who work across stamp design, stamp production and management. And my colleague, Eileen Hanrity, who is senior manager of membership and projects here at Business to Arts. And once again, those that are just joining you are very welcome to this on post Serstat Aaron Stamp Commission in partnership with Business to Arts. Now, uh, you all will have the option to ask questions uh, at the bottom of your screens. There is a Q&A uh, function and uh, throughout this webinar, if you feel like you would like to ask a question, you can record them there. And we will do our best to answer those questions live as we go through the webinar. But we have set aside approximately 20 minutes at the end of the webinar to review um, all of the questions or to try and cover anything that we feel uh, we can batch together. So we'll try and gather a number of questions and put them towards the end. And from a technical perspective, I'm just going to make sure that the screen is appearing. Eileen, could I ask you just to have a look and make sure that your screen includes the full presentation and there is no cut off of the screen as well. Eileen, just nod if it is yes and nod, it is correct. Can everyone else see the, uh, the presentation? There are people, great, okay, so. So there are a few people saying that it is cut on the screen. So I mean, you might have a quick look into that as we, uh, as we proceed. Now we have uh, approximately 214 people um, and we are uh, still uh, onboarding people. Everyone who is joining, we are, uh, we are just working through a technical issue to make sure that our uh, screen presents the full presentation. There is only half on the screen at the moment. So thank you everyone who is notifying that down at the end in the chat function. Apologies, that should be amended next. There. We are back up and running. So thank you everyone that uh, flagged that technical uh, side. I can see it has changed on my screen and thank you for letting us know that it is all good on your screens now as well. Again, you're all very welcome. Now I'm going to uh, just uh, say that on the very bottom of that screen, most of the details in relation to this commission are contained on our website on businesstowarts.ie forward slash on post. And you will see a Q&A document, which will gather all of the questions that we've been asked together that will go live a little bit later on today. So there will be a word format of all Q&A questions that we received today uploaded onto that uh, site. And from there, you will be able to submit your entry through our, uh, our platform, our dedicated platform for this commission. So I'm going to proceed. Let's move on and we'll get going. So um, in this session, we are going to provide a number of uh, guest speakers and webinar uh, contributors who will talk through various different aspects of this commission. Um, initially, I'm going to give an overview of the Onpost Stat Air and Stamp Commission. 
Um, and there is one person just saying that they cannot hear anything. Um, Hannah, who's in the background, could you message them and just to make sure that their, uh, their actual audio is turned on on their laptop. So we ask uh, everyone to submit details, everyone interested in this commission to submit details of an original artwork which commemorates the centenary of the formation of the Irish Free State, Serstad Aaron. My uh, colleague Mick O'D will talk through some of the criteria and some of his thoughts in relation to that in his segment. The selected artwork will then become part of ONPUS art collection and then subject to government approval um, later on this year. It is the ambition of ONPUS that this uh, artwork will be the stamp commemorating the centenary of Sarah Aaron in 2022. Uh, the artwork that are submitted to us can be in any visual medium. They can be fine art painting, sculpture, they can be prints, graphics, illustration and photography. There are some criteria around uh, uh, the, uh, the status of an artist, which are uh, directly taken from Visual Artist Ireland's guidelines on professional artists. And if you are familiar with Visual Artist Ireland's, you will be familiar with those criteria. The total fee for this commission is 10,000 euro, and that will include the commissioning of the original artwork and for it to become part of the collection of On Post and the use of the imagery associated with that art uh, work on a stamp. And uh, the actual T's and C's around the use of the image will be subject to an agreement between the artist that is selected um, once we get to that point. And uh, we request kindly that this is a high profile stamp commission. It is important um, for all organizations and for the people of Ireland. Um, for the year 2022 and the artist will be involved in a number of publicity campaigns as a result of this commission. Now, just to pause there, welcome everyone on board that is joining us now, you are very welcome and uh, if you have questions throughout this uh, webinar there is a Q&A and a chat function at the bottom of your screens that you, uh, you can use and we will try and answer as we go through. And then just at the bottom in bold, the deadline for this uh, commission open call process is at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 16th of June, 2021, which gives you hopefully submit sufficient time to develop your concept or to submit a pre-existing artwork for this commission uh, on the dedicated platform. And uh, the platform will cut off at 5 p.m. And unfortunately, there is no extension of time limits on that. Now, I am going to hand over to Mick O'D, past president of the Royal Hibernian Academy, to talk through his thoughts on this commission and specifically the Sarestat Aaron Stamp Commission brief. Mick, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar here today. Um, the creation of Sarestat Aaron is being marked by on post with the issuing of a stamp to mark the 100th anniversary of the founding of the state in January uh, 1922. So we're delighted that Business Through Arts has teamed up with UnPost to facilitate uh, the issuing of this stamp and also to bring us through the stages that will enable the successful artist uh, to be uh, awarded. Um, the award will encourage artists to take a closer look at the events and circumstances surrounding that revolutionary period in our history. Uh, the creative and imagination, the creativity and imagination of our best artists is being called upon to mark this significant milestone in our evolution. Um, the successful artists our designer, our artists, whose stamp uh, design has been approved, will join a long list of distinguished artists and designers who have featured on Irish stamps for close to 100 years now. Uh, the successful work will enter the collection of UnPost, and UnPost will become custodians of that work, along with many of the works that have featured on our stamps, again, for over 100 years. Uh, your stamp then will feature on all mail and parcels circulating around Ireland and on all over the world. And in fact, uh, you will be representing your country 
uh, by having uh, your image feature on that stamp. You may not have been asked to represent your country in Venice or elsewhere, but the successful candidate uh, who, who gets this award will be representing their country in a significant way. Um, so it's, it's really a, a fantastic opportunity to mark this occasion. And as an artist and the artists committee, that will be at the staff design committee that will be looking at the uh, successful stamp. I think that um, you, we, we will really achieve something quite remarkable. Uh, thank you. I'd like, okay. I'd now like to um, introduce uh, Melanie Stanford uh, to uh, talk to you. Thanks a lot, Mick. Hi everybody, my name is Melanie Stanford from Unpost. I'm the Stamp Design Manager, and I'm going to talk to you today about some of the technical criteria for designing a, a stamp. Um, as you know, we've many years of experience in stamp design. Paintings work really, really well for stamps. Photography and sculpture can be a little more challenging to replicate successfully on a stamp, but possible. Often less is more on a small scale like a stamp. The minimum dimensions for original artwork submitted is approximately 200 millimeters by 300. While there's no maximum dimensions for original artworks, artists should consider just the practicalities of presenting, displaying and storing the artwork safely with Unpust. Landscape and portrait work well equally. The, the stamp will end up being 30 millimeters by 51 or 51 by 30 but you don't have to worry about that right now. You just have to worry about the 200 millimeters by 300 millimeters. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Anne now, who's going to take you through some really strong stamps that have worked very well over time. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, my name is Anne O'Neill and I work in the stamp design area. And I'm going to present a small selection of the wonderful stamps um, to show you the diversity and the different mediums that we have featured over the years. So I'll first draw your attention to the beautiful green one up the top, with the iconic map of Ireland. It was one of our first definitive stamps it issued in 1922. It was a set of one of a set of 12. The one beside it um, is our very, very first commemorative stamp and that issued in 1929. It features Daniel O'Connell and we issue that to mark the centenary of the birth of Catholic, or sorry, of the birth of not birth, we, the centenary of Catholic emancipation, my apologies. So on the selection on the slide, you will see we have Ireland's best artists. Like for example, we have Evie Horn. She issued in 2005, she was on a stamp um, where we uh, showcased four female artists. Um, if you see the beautiful native red deer there, that was by Wendy Walsh, that stamp. Um, issued in 1980 and it was from the renowned artist Wendy Walsh. Down on the bottom left there's a very good example there of uh, a stamp with uh, and stain, stained glass works really well because of the patchwork colours and the light that shines through. That fabulous stamp of um, St Columban Colum was des designed by Steve Simpson and it was a very popular stamp and as you can see it's a very good example of good photography as well. So also I'd like to draw your attention to the sculpture there by uh, the very well-known Frederick M. McWilliam. He featured on a stamp in 1979. The figure was called the Seated Figure and it was for an Irish art um, uh, series that we did. We did several stamps on Irish art. And as you can see, there's other famous artists in there. We have Graham Nuttall, we have Ian Lowe, we have Peter Wilbur. So your name will be up there among all these very famous artists. So Eileen, if you want to pass to the next slide. This, I decided to show you some historical stamps because I thought they might be of interest. We have three very, uh, very beautiful stamps there by the very well-known artist, Robert Bala. The first one shows, um, it, it was, it was issued in 1979 to celebrate the centenary of the birth of Cork Pierce. It shows the GPO and lots of other interesting little objects and, and 
the very famous uh, side profile of Cora Pierce. The lovely uh, portraits there of of Michael Collins and Arthur Griffith, they work really well. Sketches work really well on stamps. Over there on the right hand side, I just want, I thought it would be very interesting to show you the stamps that we celebrated for the 75th anniversary of the Irish Free State. That was in 1997. We issued 12 stamps. I have six here just to show you um, what, what was uh, shown. There's a medley of Irish themes there, like we. The stamps feature Irish heritage and culture, government buildings. You can see an image of the GPO. There's passport, the flag, Aer Lingus, the banknotes. There's um, even an image of Linda Martin winning the Eurovision Song Contest. So everything that's uh, everything that represents Ireland um, over the last few years. That was 75 years of Ireland. Uh, just I want to draw your attention to the top stamp there where you can see it's a bit dark. So just be conscious of tonality and less use of monotones, because what happens is detail can be lost when it's uh, reduced down to, uh, to the, the scale of a stamp. So just be careful on that. Um, beautiful other painting there, The Men of the South by Sean Keating was uh, represented on a stamp for in 2020, when we marked the centenary of the War of Independence. So as you can see, they're all very interest there. So Eileen, do you wanna to pass to the next slide? Thanks Eileen, right, okay. So here we have another selection of Ireland's best artists. We have Louis Le Brocchi there. You can see the beautiful contemporary colors and the image, the graphic is works really well on that stamp. That stamp issued in 1973 when we uh, we were marking Ireland's entry into the European Union. The one beside that is um, a love stamp, one of our wedding stamps that issued in 1989. A beautiful uh, painting of the uh, by William Mulready called the Sonnet, very well known, renowned artist. Um, over there on the right, you can see a beautiful image of an Irish bus. That's by Charles Rycraft. That issued in 1993. Charles, um, he designed a lot of our stamps back in the early 90s. He was very one, one of our very um, well-known artists. Um, also, I'd like to draw your attention to the beautiful self-portrait of Francis Bacon, very flattering. Um, we issued that stamp, uh, two stamps actually, in 2009 to celebrate the centenary of the birth of the artist. Very popular, beautiful stamps. Then you'll see a beautiful painting of uh, the playwright uh, Brian Friel. That was by James Hanley, RHA, very well-known, renowned artist. He, uh, he painted three beautiful pictures uh, of uh, modern Irish playwrights for us for the, 20, the 2009 programme. And over there on the right at the bottom, you can see a beautiful painting by Vincent Clary that issued in 2019, that was to celebrate the centenary of the first transatlantic flight, which landed in Galway. So as you can see, there are others there, this beautiful painting uh, illustration by PJ Lynch, and we have Walter Frederick Osborne and Francis Poskett. So yeah, beautiful artists there. So Eileen, do you wanna pass to the next? Yeah, thank you. So this slide brings us up to very modern recent days. There's uh, very contemporary recent stamps on this one. You'll see there on the left, we have a beautiful image of uh, Kilkenny Library. Uh, in 2009, we issued four stamps to celebrate the Carnegie Libraries. Dorothy Smith was the artist and uh, you can see it's absolutely beautiful stamp there. Uh, the one beside that, uh, Tin Lizzie, uh, the, this stamp was designed by Stephen Averill, um, very, very beautiful, iconic image, and it's based on the iconic drawing by Jim Fitzpatrick. You'll be aware of him as a famous Irish artist. He did the Che Guevara image, <clears throat> which we issued on stamp back in 2016. I won't talk about that one today, but um, yeah, that was beautiful, a very popular stamp that was issued in 2019 and um, absolutely gorgeous. The one beside that is a very good example of photography and how you can merge it with graphics to get an absolutely striking stamp. It features the beautiful Maureen O'Hara, Hollywood uh, star there, and that was designed by Design HQ. 
we had five stamps in 2020 and, and to celebrate five pioneering Irish women. And Maureen was one, among one of them. And last but not least, we have the very famous abstract modernist artist, uh, Patrick Scott, he issued in a stamp this year. In January, we issued that stamp in, and it was very, very popular stamp, a beautiful stamp. We uh, used some gold and silver foil to um, emanate the, the gold that Patrick Scott uses. So it was absolutely gorgeous stamp. So that brings us right up to the minute. So I just like to thank you for listening and um, best of luck to everyone who enters the competition. So I'll now hand you back to Melanie. Thank you. Right, thanks a lot, Anne. So finally from me, the process of the Stamp Commission. Um, on post will now select a designer who will work with the selected artist to feature the artwork on the final stamp design and make it work within our standard on post stamp guidelines. The typographer will resize the selected artwork to fit the stamp size we mentioned earlier. The final stamp will be designed in line with our process then in on post and with the Philatelic Advisory Committee and the Stamp Design Advisory Committee, and then submitted to the government for final approval in the third quarter of 2021. The final stamp will then issue in December 2022. And I might just give you a look at how, how your stamp would look on a sheet of stamps. I don't know if people can see that, but um, it's just good to see how they, how they might end up. So... There you go. So I'm going to hand back now to Eileen. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks very much for that, Melanie. So I'm just going to move on quickly then. So I'm just going to talk briefly around the entry criteria and the platform guidelines. So um, there are more criteria than this, but the, the top four that we're just going to chat through now is that the artist must be an Irish resident and based on the island of Ireland. So we do ask that you submit your residential address whenever you're completing the entry form. Um, all entrants must be professional working artists and meet a minimum of three criteria according to guidelines set by Visual Artists Ireland. Um, I see that there has been a question around the criteria. All of the criteria that we're asking you to confirm applies to you are all listed on the entry form, which you will see shortly, and they're all listed in the terms and conditions um, document as well. So you can have a full read through of all the criteria for how you then might meet that criteria to be considered a professional working artist as laid down by BAI. We are asking that only one submission per artist is permitted. So um, if you do have a, a range of artworks that you think might be very um, suitable for this commission, do try and put your best foot forward and select the best artwork that you think um, fully commemorates the centenary of Sir Stat Aaron. And all entries must be an original artwork and you will be asked to confirm that in the entry form, just to make sure that you can stand over the fact that this is your own artwork um, and you can um, allow on post to use that artwork on the stamp and there'd be no other issues in terms of copyright or image use. So just to touch on briefly, so this um, information here in green, so this is the actual platform where you will be logging in to submit your artwork. So it's business businesstwarts.awardsplatform.com. There is a big button on our website that actually says enter here. So if you just go onto our website, there's a very click and um, a quick click link. And what I'm gonna do now is just stop sharing the PowerPoint presentation and show you briefly the awning entry form that you're going to see. So let me just bring that up. So hopefully everyone can see that, okay. So just go to the entries. So whenever you log in to the online platform, this is the information that you're going to see. And um, so you can just see that we have basically listed all of the information for the Stamp Commission on this initial homepage. It gives you all of the essential information in terms of the stamp sizes, the minimum dimensions that um, Melanie's outlined earlier in this conversation, the fee applicable um, to the artist, as well as giving you a brief overview of how the selected artist is going to be chosen by the assessment panel, which Mick O'Day is kindly going to chair for us. We do also outline the key dates. So we're currently doing the webinar at the moment. So this will be fully recorded and available online for you to watch back at any point in the coming weeks. And um, the application deadline is, as Andrew said, 5 p.m. on Wednesday, 16th of June. And as he said, there will be no extension to this deadline. So please do get your entry in as early as possible. And um, it's always better to just get it in in plenty of time, but five o'clock on the 16th is your, is your final kind of moment to be able to pop it in. And we will be in touch with all entrants to the commission um, before the end of July to let you know whether you've been selected for the stamp commission. So we've just hyperlinked all of the key documents there as well. So if you at any time you have a question, 
that you might want to refer to. The full terms and conditions documents are highlighted. The entry questions, which are just a Word document to show you what questions are coming up now on the online form. And as Andrew indicated earlier, an FEQ document is being compiled at the moment through all the questions that we've been getting in through the chat and Q&A function here. We're going to collate all that information and make it publicly available on our website after the webinar. And any further questions that we might get in, we will update that document as that happens. So just to show you briefly, so whenever you're going to start your entry, you just click this big blue button that says start entry. And then what it will do is going to bring you into this screen. And you just have to pop in the information um, here under your entry name. So whether that's that's probably going to be just your own name or if you want to put in the name of the artwork, that's perfectly fine. The entry form is quite small. It's quite short. There's not a huge amount of questions on this, but we're just asking for your own information um, from the artist's perspective. So just some contact information that you will pop in and including your phone number and um, any websites in terms of social media that you might have, just pop it in just so that we know that um, you have all those kind of capabilities as well. And then as you move down, you've just got your biography or your artist statement. And there is a word limit here of 300 words. So anywhere that there's a word limit, it will be clearly indicated on screen. And we then ask that you upload a CV um, and that's going to be a PDF file as well. So in addition to an artist being able to submit on your own behalf, galleries can submit an entry on behalf of an artist. So these questions are for the gallery and representative just to let us know who that person is in the gallery that's submitting an artwork on behalf of a particular artist. But those questions all here are just in relation to the gallery. Moving on then to the working artist criteria. So as we said, these criteria have been pulled over from the Visual Artists Ireland um, criteria for what they would term to be professional working artists. So they're all detailed here in full um, kind of sentences. So what you do, these are all check boxes. So as you read through the criteria, anything that applies to you, just tick the box beside it and it makes a note of the fact that you then have that criteria marked against your name. And um, we will be asking that there is a minimum of three criteria from this in order for you to be considered for this commission. So make sure that you do read these in depth, um, but they're all replicated here and these are the criteria that we will be basing this on. Nothing additional, it's all listed here on the system. As you move on then to the actual artwork, so we will be asking you to provide the, deep, the title of your artwork, the description of the artwork and how you feel this responds to the brief of commemorating Sir Start Erin. Um, so again, we have a 300 word limit on that. So um, try and make your um, argument for how you feel this artwork really commemorates the spirit of what we're trying to achieve. We do ask you just to outline what the medium of the artwork is, the size in centimetres and um, unframed and also framed if applicable. And um, these questions are about prints if you happen to be submitting um, a print work. And then we ask that you let us know any installation or delivery requirements, just that if your art, piece of art is selected as the, as the one that's going to be used on the stamp. So we have all that information already to hand and also any care instructions for your artwork, just to make sure that we can um, fully send over um, the storage or anything thereafter of the artwork by on post. Finally then, the main thing that we need to do. So when we get to the attachments, we're asking you to submit three images of the artwork that you want to be considered for the stamp commission. So these can be either a JPEG or TIFF format, and it should be a minimum of one megabyte and a maximum of three megabyte per image whenever you're uploading it to the system. And then again, what we've done, this is just a full outline of the criteria that you're agreeing to by entering this competition. So we do ask that you just run through all that criteria. And once you're happy with all of that um, and the terms and conditions, you need to tick the box at the bottom to say that you agree to all of the above. As soon as you tick that, you'll be able to submit into the final um, entry for consideration. If you want to be added to the Business Arts newsletter to hear of any further opportunities, you can do so. That's optional. It's not mandatory. It's just for your own interest. And then finally, this is where you actually add your attachment. So you can just tick the add attachment button upload the images that you want to put forward for consideration of the same artwork, fill in some information about the title, and then when you're all happy and ready to go, you can click submit entry. So that's the last step is just to make sure that you do click submit entry before 5 p.m. on the 16th of June. Um, the system, it's fairly intuitive. If you have any questions around this or how to use it, or if you come up with any kind of problems, you can always send us a quick email to um, our team here, which is just onpost at businesstwarts.ie and we'll come back and troubleshoot any kind of issues that you might be having. Um, the system does save as you go along. So as you enter information, it saves it. 
And then, so you can always log out and return and come back to it. But we do ask that you um, submit up to three attachments here of your artwork that you want to be considered. And then do please click submit entry. That's the kind of the main point that we want you to do before five o'clock on the 16th of June. So we're just going to stop that screen at the moment. I'm just going to bring back up our PowerPoint. There we go. So as you can see here, that's just the information here. And um, whenever you're a new entrant to the system, you will receive a verification email. So please do check your spam folder in case anything has went in there, as you will have to click the verification email before you can actually gain access to the system. And um, if you have maybe entered for something that Business Towards have run before, you can just re-log in with your same email. And if you have any kind of password problems, just click on the forgot password button. Um, but as I said, the system saves your entry as you're completing it. You must answer all mandatory questions and the system will flag to you which questions are mandatory and do include your attachments. Um, and then finally, the deadline, as Andrew said earlier, is the 16th of June. So we're just going to move on now to the Q&A session. So there's lots of questions that have been coming in, which is always great to see. So I'm just going to kick things off by getting some questions up and running here. So the first question that we've received is what file types would be the preference to be received? So we are asking that image files are coming in in either um, JPEG format, but TIFF or PNG format can also be submitted. And like I said, um, file sizes should be between one megabyte and three megabytes in size um, just to be entered into our system. Um, and this might be a question for you now. Um, how will Unpost print the stamps? And might that influence the design of the actual stamp? Um, they're printed on CKYM colors. Um, so it, it depends, is, is the person looking to know if there's going to be any final finishes or any technical, extra technical touches or anything like that? It's no, I think it's just process. a reference to whether it's, it, it, it might affect the artwork itself. Yeah. yeah, it's a four color process. CKYM is the printing technique we use. Okay, perfect. Great. And um, just go back to another question here. And um, if people are portrayed, do they have to be recognizable figures? And um, so I guess, as we've seen in the lovely stamps that you showed us on, um, people don't necessarily need to be recognizable or famous figures. And um, but we might try and have um, that selection of stamps publicly available for people to maybe look at um, after the fact. So I might just um, put those up online as well, which is good. Um, Andrew, this might be a question for you then in terms of, um, I'm an Irish artist living abroad. Am I eligible to apply? Unfortunately, due to the level of submissions that we expect in this, we have uh, restricted the criteria to artists that are residents on the island of Ireland. So in the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland, and you will be asked to submit your residential address on application. I am going to step back as well, just um, to allow Mick to answer the question about, I guess, the overall theme. I think that's come up in a couple of the questions as well, and it relates to the depiction of people either um, in a figurative way or in a more abstract way. And Mick, have you any thoughts about the wide nature of this brief and uh, what types of subject matter could be could be presented? Um, I think that it's a really wide open uh, that the the response to the theme um, will reflect the nature of the various practices that are currently uh, going on in the country. So it may just be text-based, it may be purely design, it could be representational uh, without it being specific. In other words, not portraying particular recognizable individuals who were involved and then again it may so we're not too sure as to what's going to emerge we're not being prescriptive uh, the only thing that uh, we are expecting is that people will have a fairly good idea of what's involved in when you're looking at a stamp what's going to work and what won't um, and even though we have uh, size measurements that Melanie um, outlined earlier on, I don't think that people need be overly exercised that to have a rectangular in a landscape format or rectangular in a portrait format uh, and be approximate 
is good enough that the um, designer will work with the image and um, position it on the what will be the final stamp with text. But to answer your question about representation, Andrew, I don't think that we, we don't know what's going to emerge. Um, this is a very imaginative uh, scheme, very imaginative award by on post. As I said earlier on, given the archival reservoir that now exists and the amount of images that have been made available, particularly because of the um, decade of commemoration, uh, on post has decided not to use the available imagery themselves, but to leave it, to put it out there to the artistic community to either process that work, them, that those images and make them available in a design or not to. So we, we, are, we are expecting the collective ingenuity and creativity of artists in Ireland uh, to address this subject and, um, and surprise us. Um, and we're not, it's not that we're looking for anything dramatic because it's, it's a complex and multifaceted um, commemoration in lots of ways, but that uh, we're not being prescriptive. We don't know what to expect. Uh, we await with interest. Coming back to a couple of other questions that I, I see on the screen as well. Uh, um, they relate to kind of the use of concepts as opposed to an original work or, um, or previously produced and published work. And um, we're leaving this open to all different types of uh, submissions. Um, but what is what is more common maybe when you oversee the stamp design selection to, to have in relation to uh, a submitted proposal? Is that for me, Andrew? Yes, I think it would be uh, good. Could you run that by me again? We have a, a question in relation to uh, concepts original yeah. artworks um, that exist or the uh, artworks that are already published and out there in the world. What um, is the opinion? I might open that up to Anne as well as you, Mick, as well. The, the two of you could, could discuss that together. Yeah. Um, personally, again, it's um, a case of, you know, we are open to whatever is there because there's, just, there's so many images out there that pre-exist that could be harnessed or part harnessed to submit. Um, we, 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 we will wait and see. It's really uh, about innovation and about ways of, as it were, uh, reinterpreting existing images uh, and presenting them or coming up with totally original ones. Yeah, I think ideally we would prefer to have an original piece of artwork because of the copyright issues that might go, you know, with pre-existing artwork. I think ideally we'd be hoping for uh, an original. Piece. So that just for clarity, in order to assess the artworks uh, as close to completed artwork as, as possible submitted to us. I mean, I'm going to hand back over to you. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we have had a number of questions in terms of whether the artist should be the person to um, add in a bleed or the text or that typography. But and you might just clarify that in terms of what the designer might do with the selected artwork when, that, when that's been um, selected by the panel. Yeah, the artist will be responsible for adding the typography. That will be the indicia, the era, the in, the title of the, um, the stamp issue. Yeah, so the artist doesn't have to worry about any of that. It doesn't have to worry about the bleed or the, or the border or the year and the, the year of issue that we, we print on all our stamps down the, in the, the bottom. And it's only two points, it's a tiny, Year of issue, but yeah, so it's it's just the artwork. We will take care of everything else. Okay, and I guess just a supplementary question, and um, someone has just asked whether the white border that might be added to the stamp is that included within those dimensions that Melanie outlined earlier, or are they additional, the small millimeter addition? No, they're included. They're included yes. on the fifty-one by thirty that Melanie um, mentioned earlier. Yeah, that includes the white border. Okay, perfect. No problem. Um, and then just looking through, so uh, we have had a, quite an interesting question. Um, will there be more than um, just one image selected for this commission or will there be a number of stamps launched for this particular commemoration due to the, the nature of the commemoration? It's just one, one stamp, yeah. 
just someone. Perfect. One. Great. I'm just looking through some other questions. Um, we have another question here that if the chosen artwork is an edition print, for example, a screen print, what happens to the remaining prints in the edition? Would the artist be able to sell them or would Unpost want to purchase the entire edition of that? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I don't, don't think we were expecting to see a few different, a yeah, a different, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I suppose we'll have to think about that one and get back to, yeah. to that person. Yeah, sorry about that. We I didn't um, foresee this question, so. Yeah, no, that's no problem. We can um, clarify that um, for Emily and then we can come back to you, Emily, about that, that's no problem. Eileen, while you're uh, reviewing some of the other questions, I'll jump in with one here. So do we know what the denomination of the stamp will, will be, uh, Melanie or Anne? Um, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, yeah, it, it, will, it will possibly be a national uh, stamp which will mean it'll be whatever the national rate is. At the moment, it's one euro. It'll have an N on it, which means it can be uh, posted to anywhere within Ireland and Northern Ireland with the, the national rate. Perfect. Um, just running through some questions here. Um, so people are just asking um, generally about the attachments to submit. So we are asking that three images of the same artwork are attached to your entry in order to be considered. Um, People are just asking whether um, the images should be of different areas of the artwork, um, up close or in its entirety. And I think it's good maybe to have a spread of that, Andrew, you might have um, a different opinion, but um, we are looking for three images that do maybe portray the artwork in its full entirety, as well as potentially some close up as well. For example, why do we why do we ask for up to three images? You may want to uh, present an, an image of the artwork just on its own. You may want to present an image of the artwork on a wall or on a plinth or how it may be hung in, in a location. And then you may want to do close-ups of specific features within the artwork to demonstrate um, either tonal, tonal range or to demonstrate the clarity of the artwork as well. So what we can only do is we can accept only three images per uh, submission. And uh, we hope that the three, you will be able to decide which ones are appropriate and uh, and talk about the various points that you would like to draw attention to. Perfect. And um, just going through some other um, questions here. So there was a question, um, Mick, you have previously touched on this, but someone is just asking for, are there any themes that we wish to promote or embrace more specifically, for example, technology, history, culture, or women? Um, it's it's uh, wide open, Eileen. Uh, we're, again, it, there is no particular theme that we're looking for. Um, I guess the uh, answer or the submission will reflect the concerns of the particular artist and how they wish to uh, view that uh, moment through their particular lens and what uh, it is that is central probably to their work and how they then in turn view uh, what happened and, and how to, in their estimation, properly commemorate the founding of Seerstad era. Mm. Okay, perfect. And um, we just have another question around um, pre-selection for consideration. Someone's just asking if they can um, deliver the original artwork before the final decision is made. So we will just reiterate that it's a fully online process. We're just asking for you to submit the images of your artwork through the online platform. We will not be in receipt of any physical artwork before the assessment panel meet. So do just um, focus on the online entry platform. And um, like I said, if you have any questions or um, slight problems accessing the online platform, just give us a quick email at onpost at business2arts.ie. We'll come back to you um, quite quickly and be able to work through that, but we will not be in receipt of any physical artworks um, for consideration for this. It's just purely online only. I'm just going to jump back in, Eileen, while you read some of the other questions there as well. I know that there are some questions about dimensions uh, from artists. Uh, Melanie and Anne, I'm right to say that while we are not being prescriptive in the dimensions, it is highly likely that the artwork will be used um, in the best possible way on the stamp uh, surface available by a graphic designer and the artist working together. Is, is that right? Is that typical in your that's, case? That's correct, yeah. 
And uh, there is another question about uh, pre-selection or just the overall processes um, in this, uh, in this um, uh, open call. So depending on the volume of uh, applications or people that submit, the, uh, the terms and conditions, and I draw everyone's attention to the T's and C's, which are on that website page, www.business2arts.ie forward slash on hyphen post. Um, you will see the full list of descriptions and there will also be a, a frequently asked questions document there after this webinar a little bit later today. But uh, the, the overall um, uh, panel, if we feel that there are a large volume of submissions, we may uh, opt to do a, a shortlisting process to uh, make sure that we are all um, presenting the best possible uh, works that fit within the criteria. And we may also ask to uh, join, uh, to have uh, the assessors joined by other colleagues from both on post and from the arts world and uh, graphic design world to help us. But it really depends on the submissions that we, uh, levels that we receive. Um, and uh, the final question that I observe in terms of uh, consistent is the criteria that are taken from Visual Artist Ireland. There are seven or eight criteria there. I can't exactly remember, but uh, our, the submissions need only uh, select three or have to uh, have three of the uh, criteria in order to submit. And they are the professional artist uh, uh, guidelines provided by Visual Artist Ireland. I need back over to you. Um, so there are a number of questions. Um, someone has asked about whether it's appropriate for the artist to sign the front of the artwork that they usually would. Or should they avoid doing so on this occasion? Um, I don't think it'll matter. Uh, it, this that usually maybe happens for, for instance, something like the BP Portrait Awards. Um, but um, if there is a signature there or not, it won't make any difference. I think that um, the main thrust will be what's presented, uh, image-wise. The, the signature may enhance or detract. So, but I don't think it's an issue. Okay, perfect. Um, and then another question about whether or not the artwork um, can be purely digital or do Unpost really want something physical for their collection? Um, Anna, Melanie, you might be able to respond to that. Um, yeah, it would be lovely to have something physical. It would be lovely to have the original artwork for the collection for Unpost. We have our own archive and it would be well looked after we and hopefully we would be able to exhibit some of these artworks down the line someday so it would be nice to have the physical painting okay perfect great um, or, just or, uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be a painting as Anne knows yeah. it's just the, the physical thing yeah Pieces. yeah perfect and um, just a, a quick question whether or not if a graphic designer and um, feels that they're eligible to enter and do enter and their typography is an integral part of the design, would still another designer be allocated to the final stamp design to work with them in tandem? I think that the uh, expertise of the panel, uh, which will include designer, uh, a designer, stroke designers, uh, will determine that. They may uh, accept the complete package mm -hmm. if it manages to, live, to deliver in what the panel would consider uh, a, a comprehensive way. Uh, if not, uh, the, the panel will reserve the right to uh, ask uh, expertise from the designers that on post use. Okay, perfect, great. Um, Andrew, I think you maybe had wanted to answer this question. Um, what might happen to the original artwork? Can a painting be on paper or on stretched canvas? There's a number of questions about media and again we are throwing it open to uh, the responses of all the various different disciplines in uh, visual media. So there is a question about glass work. Uh, you will see an example of a sculpture presented on a stamp by F.E. McWilliam and uh, there are other more graphic style artworks. There are portraits, there are landscapes, there are types of street art presented in the range of stamps that we've shown in this webinar. So we are, again, as Mick says, we are calling on the creativity and, and, uh, and unique art styles of all of the artists that will uh, submit to respond to this relatively wide brief. Um, and uh, I, I think in relation to the output, uh, what might happen with the artwork, I think it's highly likely that OnPost would like to show the artwork somewhere within OnPost's publicly accessible buildings. 
or to show it at different stages um, uh, if it is an artwork that is in their collection, which it will be. Um, the artwork may uh, go to different uh, uh, on post branches around the country. It might just be left in, uh, uh, in the GPO, but it really depends on what the artwork is, how easy it is to exhibit it, and uh, any of the criteria in relation to that. There is also a couple of questions about the size of the overall artwork as well. And um, while we've given a minimum dimension, we haven't given a maximum dimension, but we uh, would recommend that everyone thinks about how a very, very large artwork can be uh, reproduced on a stamp of relatively small and modest size. Um, uh, Mick, just in, in relation to larger artworks, have you any thoughts about that? Um, well, sometimes you will find, um, Andrew, that a, a small work of art will be quite complex and detailed, and some very large works will uh, be broad strokes, so it's a difficult one to call. Um, in, I think that uh, size, uh, the minimum size has been given. We are not sure of what will come when it comes to maximum size, and I think we're open to that. Uh, and and uh, it'll all depend on whether we feel that this is the one, this is the image that really encapsulates uh, the theme. Melanie or Anne, do you have any thoughts on that in relation to dimensions as well? Yeah, we have no plans as yet, um, but we, we will be thinking about it. So where it'll end up, where it'll be stored, where it'll be exhibited. Um, so that's quite open-ended, but we do want everyone to be practical about it um, in terms of size as well. And anything to add there? Yeah, um, well, I, I know like where we store our the art that we have at the moment, um, I'd say the drawers are like a meter long. So it, it just would cause, it would be difficult to store anything that's too large. Uh, we don't really have a, a large capacity in the storeroom for our art. Um, so just bear that in mind, yeah. Eileen, are there any other batched questions that you would like to run through? Um, yeah, so I'm just looking through. So um, there are just a number of questions about whether the stamp needs to be a single stamp or if it could be the size of a stamp sheet. So man, I think you've covered that and that it is going to be a stamp. It's a stamp size, but whenever it's printed, it will be printed on a full sheet. Yeah, it's it's one stamp um, and we may produce it lots of different ways, but it's just one national stamp. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I guess that just leads on to the other question of exactly what text will go on to the stamp on top of the artwork. So I think Anne touched on it a bit. Um, there'll be error and then an end. Is there anything further on that might be included? We'll have to be the, the title. title. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Melanie. Yeah, the title. Sir Sat Naharan will be um, on it. Now, I don't know if we will have the full title of the centenary of the formation or it'll just be an abbreviated version. Sure. We'll decide that. Perfect. And that is all part of the government appro approval processes in relation to the Stamp Commission, which is why we are asking for the artworks now well in advance of uh, the end of this year and for final delivery in December 2022. Um, just before we reach the end, um, uh, Mick, Anne and uh, Melanie, are there any um, things that you feel like we haven't said uh, so far that you think is important for people to, to know? And I might work backwards on this, Anne. I'm going to start with you if, you, if you'd like, or if you want to pass over to Manly, you can do that. Um, yeah, no, I'd just like to add the best of luck to everybody. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all the participants' entries. And it's a very exciting project to be involved in. Melanie? Yeah, I would just say, don't be limited. Um, you know, think about the topic, but then we want to see your, your view of that topic. So don't, don't limit your imagination. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, I, following on on what Melanie Nan said, I just think relax, um, take it on board. I mean, if you have already researched the subject and are familiar with it, fine. Um, it'll, it'll, it, it's not going to make it any easier. If you don't know much about it it'll inc and you're interested in doing it, I think that one of the benefits from this is that you will be examining an important part of uh, our history and to get to know the complexities or even just the main thrust of what happened and how uh, Serstat Aaron came about would be of tremendous benefit. And in addition to that, you'll do something and put it in. And if you're not in, you can't win. So uh, give it a go. Um, 
take it on board. You don't have to be an expert. Uh, all you need to do is to use the creativity uh, that you have that you can bring to bear on any subject. And in this case, we're asking you to bring it to bear on this particular subject and uh, submit a work, which we would be really looking forward to, to looking at. Thanks, Mick. Eileen, from a technical perspective on the system, anything you'd like to recap on? Um, no, so the main thing is just to make sure that you do click the verification email when you have signed up for the system, if it's your first time using it. Um, otherwise, you can't gain access to the system. Um, as I said, there are some word limits on certain questions, such as your artist statement, and also how the artwork fits the brief. So just make sure to not go beyond that 300 word limit. Otherwise, you will be unable to actually submit the entry. The system will ask you to reduce the, the number of texts that you have in there. So just keep an eye on that whenever you're typing all of your answers. Um, and it is just a case of three attachments to be added. Um, so do just bear in mind the file size is between one megabyte and three megabyte um, of, of your file size to be attached to the system. Um, and again, it's just please get it in before five o'clock on Wednesday, the 16th of June. That's the main thing. Um, getting it in earlier is always better. And then if you want to just double check with us that it's been fully confirmed and fully received, that's perfectly fine. We'll, we'll respond to any questions with that. Whenever you submit, you get a confirmation email from the system. But if you just want to kind of have peace of mind and come back to us, that's grand. Um, and we know that we're probably going to have um, a substantial amount of interest in this and um, just going by the numbers here today and the questions coming in. So um, do try and get it in ahead of time, just in case the system might be slightly overwhelmed toward the end of the day on the 16th. So do try and get it in as early as possible. Okay, well, uh, there are a couple of last questions in there. I'm going to try and cover them. Uh, will OnPost uh, own the original artwork? Yes, that is. The, the fee of 10,000 euro is for the artwork to be commissioned and to be purchased and be brought into the collection of OnPost and for OnPost to have the appropriate use of rights of that artwork for the, uh, for the creation of the stamp. And then uh, the questions in relation to eligibility, we do ask everyone to uh, read through the T's and C's document and uh, the number of eligibility requirements and to tick the appropriate three or more that apply to you as a professional artist. Following best practice guidelines in a commission related to this, uh, we are using the Visual Artist Ireland guidelines in relation to professional artists. So I know that we are rapidly coming to the end of our time. I would like to thank our colleagues in OnPost, Melanie and Anne, for their, uh, their build up to this, for providing really useful information in relation to the technicalities and the types of stamps that are, are uh, depicted on stamps. Mick, um, uh, for his overall leadership position with the Stamp Advisory Committee uh, with OnPost and uh, the work that goes into that and his thoughts in relation to this commission in particular. Thank you for your time and uh, co uh, contribution to today. And Eileen, my colleague, thank you very much. Again, this video and webinar will be available on our YouTube channel straight away after this. So give us a couple of hours to upload it. You will be able to view back on all of the stamps that were presented on this video and you will be able to consult an FAQ document on the same location on our website, www.business2arts.ie forward slash on hyphen post. So with that, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us and uh, we look forward to receiving your submissions. Thank you again. Best of luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.